four, three, two, one. Good morning, church. How's everybody this morning? Hello. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to do it. You just got to do that. You got to have some fun. Liven things up in here. Well, it is a wonderful, wonderful morning out today. A little bit brisk, but that gets your blood pumping, right? Because if not, you freeze. <laughs> so, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. What does that speak to your heart when we when we talk about that? If God is in your heart, and if you're bringing Christ into your life, you're going to have that joy. Joy, joy, joy down in my heart, right? There, there's a song or something like that. I remember from when uh, Bruce was a kid. And, uh, so we need to be filled with that joy. We need to be filled. We should be glad that this is the day that God has made for us. Take ownership of it. Because God created this day for you and for me. And it is what you make of it. God gives it to you to be the steward of the day. Keep that thought in mind as you go through each and every day. So, good news, we are approved to go into a new building at 121 Old Marion Boulevard in Marion, which is right off 7th Avenue. Uh, behind the McDonald's there, there's a little shopping mall in there, and we are on the north side of the shopping mall, Suite 121. Uh, we take occupancy on February 19th, which means we can start moving our stuff in and kind of fixing the place up. Our rent, and we'll actually start in that space on March 1st. We actually take it over officially. That's when the lease begins. And our first service will be March 6th. And our first event will be, guess what? Grace Street Center. How about that? Wow. When we moved into this space, our very first event was Grace Street Cinema. So it's pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. So uh, coming up this Wednesday, we have our group study and prayer time at 7 p.m. right here. And Orange Track Racing Season 17 <coughs> starts on February 12th. So we will be having that here and then obviously that will transition with us over there. And uh, so we're looking forward to Season 17 and uh, bringing that joy into people's hearts as well. So well, let's go to God in prayer as we start this time of worship together. Gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, we just praise you and thank you for this day another day in your presence, Lord, another day of life that you have given to us to share with one another. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings that you give us each and every day and for the opportunity to gather freely and openly here to worship you today. And Lord, we thank you that we can worship you not only in word, but in song and our fellowship time together is all an act of worship for you. So we invite you into our presence right here, right now. And we know that by your word, when two or more are gathered in your name, there you are amongst us. And we praise you and thank you for that. We thank you for that blessing, Lord, that you can be with us here today. Lord, we invite your Holy Spirit to come into this place, come into our hearts and come into our minds today to speak your word into us, to help clarify and reveal your word to us today. Lord, we Thank you for the message that you've given Pastor Terry to give today and, and for the blessings that that will bring to us as well. So, Father God, as we come into this time of worship, let us put all other things aside. Put the things of the world aside, Lord, and concentrate on you and the blessings that you have for us today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, Pastor Mark. You know, when, one of the things about being excited for Christ and, and having some joy on a Sunday morning, one of the things that happens is it's contagious. <laughs> See, now I'm excited. Now I can't 
can't wait to get along with worship. Now, we've been talking for about a month now about miracles, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Terry's going to wrap that up today, right? right. This is the final <coughs> sermon in the series, and Terry's going to hit a grand slam today for Jesus. Uh, <laughs> no pressure, Terry, at all. Um, but I'm excited. Are you excited? Oh, absolutely. Are you excited? And you just can't see, you can't see everybody here, but they're all excited. <laughs> of course they are. Not just Shannon. Everybody's excited. Uh, let's praise God with some excitement. <laughs> acceptable in your sight, Lord, today. Let the music sing out to you in praise, honor, and glory.
We believe in the Holy Spirit, and He's given us in the light. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that He conquered death. We believe in the resurrection, and He's coming back again. We us, and if you're watching online today, that the Holy Spirit fill your hearts, fill your minds as, as we prepare to hear the message that you put on Pastor Terry's heart. May we be open vessels to your word. Again, we welcome you into this time of worship on our uh, call to worship this morning that Pastor Terry has picked for us comes from 1 John 4, 16. And in the New Living Translation, it says, We know how much God loves us, and we have put our trust in his love. God <coughs> is love. And all who live in love live in God, and God is lives in them. What a promise that is. That's something to grab onto and hold on to and think about. I, I read that song or that uh, verse constantly to remind us that God lives in us, that God is love. So no matter what we're going through, we have to understand that God loves us unconditionally and unendingly. And see, that's the nature of Christian love. It's God's nature to love. It's a pure love. We call it agape love. And, it, and it's a love that comes with no strings attached. It doesn't mean that, Shannon, if you're good today, God's going to love you. Or, Beckham, if you help that little old lady across the street, then God will love you. See, there's no strings attached to it. It's an agape love. It's a God-given love. He loves us because he is God. Because he is God. But see, love and human nature, we, we look at that, it's been spoiled by sin. And when people are born again, 
then they become the work of God. They become that work. By having God work in their lives, they can become born again. And then they learn to love as God loves in human form. As God loves. The character of God's love is seen in his act of giving his son to die for those who rebelled against him. See, it's counterintuitive to the human nature. When somebody rebels against us, we want to strike out against them. But see, what God did is he gave his son to the very people who rebelled against God. That's the nature of God's love. That's the nature of God's love. See, because they were worthy of death. But Jesus died to bear the judgment of sin on their behalf. And by doing so, by doing so, they gave, God gave them the ability to have life eternally with God through Jesus Christ. People cannot see God, but they can see that he lives within them. They can see that as Christians, as we have going through our daily lives, as we have Christ represented to them. If we live a Christian life, if we live a godly life, then they should see Christ living within us. And they should feel God's love in and through us, through what we say and through what we do. And we do that mostly when we, when we show that love to people who don't really deserve it. When you have somebody that you work with, a co-worker, that just beats you down and is nasty to you all the time and you return it with kindness and love. That's showing Christ represented, represented to these people. That's God's love. And see, we as Christians, we've got increased confidence in God through our inward possession of that Holy Spirit. As I open the prayer today, I talked about the Holy Spirit indwelling within us, living within our hearts. And see, that then becomes an outward acknowledgement of Christ as the Son of God who is there to save sinners. They know that if they live in God, then God lives in them, in and through that Holy Spirit. This new relationship with God is, is all about love. And it enables them to practice love towards one another just as Christ did too. This gives them that added confidence that they are saved eternally. And that they never need fear God's judgment. Because they have Christ living within them through the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, as we come into this time of worship, we just praise you and thank you. That you are a loving God. That God, you are love. And you represent that love through us to others. God, help us to be better stewards of the love that you give us. Help us to give out that love to others freely and openly. Thank you, Lord God, that you have blessed us with this space, with people who uh, have come together to worship you. Lord, let us be that beacon to others in the world that they might see this love they might know this love, and that we might share this love with them through you. Thank you, Lord God, in your precious and holy name I pray. Amen. Amen. been a journey we've been on through this series. It started with an amazing movie and uh, oh yeah, we have a tendency to show movies where we have to put out Kleenexes. <laughs> this is one of those. If you haven't seen it, uh, let us know. Um, I know it's lent out right now, but uh, we'd be more than happy to lend it out to you so you can watch it as well. Today we're going to wrap up this series with a message that hits us all right here, right in the heart. We're going to talk about the miracle of love. 
a love that gives us hope, a love that gives us assurance, no matter what we're facing in our lives. Now, as I was doing my devotion yesterday, I ran across this and it, it was, um, just hit me hard because this is what the love that God can do for us. Um, this was about a young man, his name was Shane Taylor. And he was considered one of the most dangerous people or men in the UK prison system. He was in there for attempted murder. And while he was in there, he attacked a prison officer. He got time added on to his sentence. And then he went to a prison ministry. Now, most would say by chance, but we all know better than that. God sent him there. And in that moment, he came out of that. It ended up being a course that he came out of. And he came out, he said aloud as he went throughout the prison, Jesus is real. He shouted that at the tops of his lungs. All throughout the prison, he became part of the chaplaincy program there. He, he started doing these things and he was released early he met his soon-to-be wife who was also troubled in her life he showed her Jesus they're now married with five kids that's the power of God's love and in our story today we hear uh, about what that love is and um, just to kind of set this up a bit, uh, you know, here we've got a depiction of mom and the daughter from the Bean family. If you haven't seen the movie yet, I'm not going to go into it too much. We're going to show just this scene today. But in this scene, we see Christy and her middle daughter, Anna. Anna has a mysterious, life-threatening intestinal disorder. It's baffled all the doctors. I think we've said it over and over over the past few weeks. They thought it was uh, heartburn and they thought it was uh, that she was uh, gluten intolerant and all these different things. But it turns out that this intestinal disease was not allowing uh, her brain to tell her intestines how to digest, to process the food. And she was in incredible pain. And in the movie we can see the bloating and this poor little girl i mean her stomach was just it was distended out and her mom was doing everything she could to try and help her and nothing was working parents worst nightmare when you can't help your child at this point in the story everyone is trying to figure out what's going on and why and how they should handle this terrible situation let's watch this clip That's it. That's all. That's it. When you said clip, you meant clip. It was a clip. About that much. Well, we didn't want to give too much away about the movie, right? So there's that. <laughs> We're safe. Think about your own life. Can you relate with this mom? You don't know what to do. There's so many things that, that I don't even know this morning. For several years, I, I made three or four trips to the emergency room thinking I was having a heart attack. And then in 2011, I finally found a doctor that said, oh, it's your gallbladder. And when they went to take it out, it was completely diseased. There was nothing left good about it. And, and, and now I'm going to just say something I posted yesterday. I, I posted this up few years ago, or Diana posted this a few years ago, but I said, if you live in a pastor's home, you have the right to remain silent because anything you say or do may be used in a sermon illustration. So Chris, I'm very sorry. 
<laughs> but Carissa had, she sometimes has problems processing food. And she went gluten free. I was so proud of her. She did this for I don't remember how many years. Oh, and then they figured it out. It was her gallbladder. She had hers up and she's not having to be gluten free anymore. We go through these things and we wonder what can we do? How many I have so many questions, Lord, but I know I'm not always gonna get that answer that I want because he does leave things as mystery to us. And it might be strange for the church to hear Pastor say, I don't know all the answers, I just don't. In fact, if we go into the movie, we see the pastor talking with Christy, and he admits that he doesn't have the answers. We don't have all the answers. And Mark said it last week, when we look into that mirror, we see, but a, a dis, it's a distorted view that we see. But then, and when he, when, by saying then, it means when we are in the presence of God, then we will see fully. Because the mirror will then become clear. And we'll be able to understand and we'll see these things. But like the mom in this clip, I want you to hear one thing today. And that is, God loves you. God loves you loves you. Whatever has happened this week, whatever has happened this month, whatever has happened the past two years, God loves you. Doesn't matter what's in your heart. Doesn't matter what's on your mind. Doesn't matter whatever you were dealing with, whatever difficulty is, whatever the tragedy you're wrestling with is, wherever you are on your journey of faith, whether you have started that journey, whether you have not started it, whether you were years down the road on it, God loves you. And here's the thing, whether you like it or not, especially if you haven't come to that, rev that revelation yet, um, God still loves you. Doesn't matter how you feel, He still loves you. And when we face the painful realities of life, because we're going to walk out the door today. We're going to have maybe a nice spiritual high today as we have church, but as soon as you walk out that door today, reality of life is going to hit you square in the face. If God loves you may seem trite and shallow, but it's not. Because it's more than just a passing of saying, bless, like, bless her heart. The truth of these three words, God loves you, is the most, most earth-shattering, life-changing truth in, not the world, the universe. The fact that God loves you is the deepest truth you can know. It's not the full length of pi. It's not some mathematical equation. It is the fact that God loves you. And the fact that God loves you changes everything. I've said it before and I'll say it again, the night that I got on my knees at Kemper Arena and finally gave it over 100%, it changed everything. In this clip, Christy is not minimizing her daughter's struggle whatsoever. She is not pushing away the important question about why God hadn't healed her yet. She's answering it with an even greater and even deeper and a more important truth and that is the truth of God's infinite and boundless love for each of us. A love that is perfect and never changing. In this world we see people saying, oh I love you. I love you so much, let's get married. But how deep is that true love in reality? Because so often we see that love break. That love with God will never break. It's perfect. And sure, our perceptions of God's love will change over time. And as we grow closer to Him, we'll understand it more, we'll feel His love more, and we'll see it in the circumstances of our lives. 
As we go through life and we, and we experience these difficulties, we will see it in a totally different way than what we would have beforehand. I was talking the other day about a 17-year-old boy. He had been in the hospital 13 of his 17 years. And when asked how he felt about that and, and why God hadn't healed him, he said, this is my temporary home. I have eternity to be healthy and healed with God in heaven. Wisdom beyond his years. Understanding of God's love beyond his years. Now, think of it this way. Think of love this is sound weird. Think of love as like Wi-Fi. When the Wi-Fi goes out, well, we might not be able to stream the service. We won't be able to get on the internet. We won't be able to do some of those things. But here's the thing. It goes away. Does the internet actually go away? It still exists. We just can't get to it. Its existence isn't it any less real because it's not currently there or that we can currently use it or see it. It's just that the immediate reality of being able to use it is disconnected. And that can be the way it is sometimes for us spiritually. When you, if you're, you know, Jesus talked about the, the seeds and, and the sowing of the seeds and in the, the shallow soil that grows up quick and then withers. But if it goes into deep soil, then it grows up full and strong. Our things, our problems, our, and the pains we go through in life, are is it because we are in that shallow, that we're the plant in that shallow soil, or are we in that deep soil? Where are we at? And what do we do when it happens? And when that happens, how do we feel about God's love? And at what point do we cry out to God and start questioning his, God, his love for us? And at what point do you start to feel unworthy of that love? Again, this all depends on where you're at in your life. Are you surrounded? A few a couple of weeks ago we talked about community. The miracle of community. And the miracle of community brings us back and it helps us to feel worthy. Because as the Proverbs tell us, iron sharpens iron. So when we come together, and that's why Mark and, and Bruce and I are so adamant about us coming together. Not just, and we want people to join us online, but we want people to be with us here in person as well. Because as a community, we grow stronger and we seek God's love more. And in that moment, we can look to the cross. And this is the first thing that we must look to is the cross. When the challenges of life cause us to doubt God's love, that cross... It's a symbol, a powerful symbol of God's love. It's a reminder of the ultimate expression of love, deeper than any expression of love that we could experience humanly, because it's God's love. It's a place where we can meet God, his arms open wide for us, because Jesus opened his arms wide and died for us so that we could live. And there is no greater sacrifice. There is no greater love. In fact, John 3.16 tells us, for this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Probably one of the most uh, well-known verses in the Bible. <coughs> Many of you might remember when Tim Tebow put it in, uh, when he was playing football, he would have it written in the black on his eyes, on his cheeks. Some people, this is the only verse they know, because we hear it so much, we know it so well. There's people that haven't even stepped foot in the door of a church that probably know this verse. God's love, we could almost say it's the theme of God's love song for us. 
Now there's some songs that we sang as kids. Remember, anybody remember singing, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. And then there's always, Jesus loves the little children. Or praise him, praise him, all you little children. God is love. And there is a reason for this common theme. God's love is truth. It's the truth that everything rests on. But the fact that it's commonly known doesn't change its uncommon power. God's love shown in Jesus is what changed all of history and changes lives today, tomorrow, and into the future. And that's how we can look to God's nature. See, as we remember the cross, the ultimate act of love, we are also reminded that God's love is not just a one-time event. It, just, it didn't just happen on that day. In fact, not only do we have this incomprehensible act of love as a demonstration of God's love, but we know from the scriptures that God himself is love. It's written throughout the book from Genesis to Revelation. In fact, not only his love leaves me speechless sometimes. It, and it's not just something that he has or does. It's, there's, there's so much more. To, it's, it's incomprehensible, all this love he has for us. And it's not just the way that he acts towards us. It's not just a core value or a character trait. It's his very nature that God is love. And that brings us to the passage from our call to worship this morning, 1 John 4, 16, where it tells us clearly when he says, we know how much God loves us and we have put our trust in his love. God is love and all who live in love live in God and God lives in them. It's important for us to remember what is perhaps the most amazing of all is that his love is intimate. And by that I mean he has so much love available for us that it's a one-on-one -on -one thing. It's not just I love you all, it's I love you. I love you. I love you. It's personal. When we think, if I, if I go back to John 3, 16, where it says, for this is how much God loved the world, let's change that to, for this is how God loved me. He gave his one and only son so that I, who believe in him, will not perish, but I will have eternal life. We can change that from the world to ourselves, because it's, while it's for everyone, it's also specifically for you. It's individual. Matthew 10, 30 tells us he loves us so much that he knows how many hairs are on your head. Psalm 139 says he, know, he tells us he knows your every thought and your every action. He has called you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you. 1 John 3, 1 tells us that. Yes, we often read the Bible as individual stories. I just got done with uh, Abraham, Isaac, and the whole lineage there, all the way through Joseph. And now I'm in Job. Individual stories, but when put together, give us this intimate love story that God has sent for us. Yeah, when you look at the Bible, we, you open it up, and there's different books, different chapters, all these different verses. Yes, you've got the different biblical heroes throughout the book. There's all these truths that we learn, all these valuable lessons. But it boils down to it's just God's love for us. 
Every good love story is one of unending love and relentless pursuit. And the story of God's love for us is exactly that kind of story. In her book, The Story of God's Love for You, author Sally Lloyd-Jones weaves together the stories of the Bible that tell the one big story of love. She begins this story with the creation of the world, and she says it this way, God looked at everything he made perfect, he said, and it was. But all the stars, all the mountains, all the oceans, all the galaxies, everything, nothing is compared to God's love for us. He would move heaven and earth, and he has, to be close to us. Throughout all of history, throughout all the moments of our lives, the one unchanging force is God's love. Circumstances change. Emotions change. Relationships change. Beliefs change. God's love for you never changes. James 1.17 says this, Whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God our Father, who created all the lights in the heavens, and he cha never changes or casts out a shifting sh shadow. And as I think of that, I think about what we talked about just before church. We were seeing it was snowing outside. And it's not a heavy snow. It's just like you see these little dots of snow falling. And I likened it to like a summer evening where you see a lightning bug. You got a light here, light over here. Those are, I think of those as like the lights from heaven. And then Hebrews 3 echoes this truth. says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Therefore, we don't trust God just to do something in our lives. We trust God because of who he is and always has been and what he is doing. And we can place our trust in what he has done, what he continues to do, and what he will do in the future. He is working on restoring and reconciling the world to himself through his love. And because of that, the love that God provides, God's love then provides us with comfort. So what's the first thing a, a parent does when a child comes to them? Oh, let me kiss your boo-boo. Mm -hmm. Depending on how big the kid is. And <laughs> <laughs> eh, just put a band-aid on it, you're all right. Our parents love us and they're gonna take care of us. They may give us a hard time about our movement because you know, maybe we're making more of it than it really is. <clears throat> but when it comes to God and the pain of our lives, his love will provide us all with comfort. God's <clears throat> love that provides that comfort provides it because it is safe. It's a haven when we're hurting. When we hurt, when we are just beaten up, we can go to God and find that peace and that comfort. We don't have to fix everything because as much as I like to think of myself as a fix-it guy, I can't fix it all. Hardest thing for me to tell a customer when I'm on the phone is, I'm sorry, the problem that you're having, you can't fix. You live between two mountains in a heavily wooded area, there's no cell cycle there is what it is. But when we can go to God and go, look at these beautiful mountains and these wonderful trees and we can just live in the comfort and the peace that it provides because, you know, without that cell phone, there's a lot of peace. <laughs> he, in his love, welcomes us and his perfect love, as what he says in 1 John 4, 18, drives out fear. So not only is it safe, it's secure. And there is nothing that can move or remove it, nothing that can defeat or replace it. Listen to what Paul wrote in Romans 8, 30, 39. He says, and I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, nor neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And we can come to him without fear, knowing that we are safe and secure and comforted by that love because God's love also <coughs> provides hope. 
Suffering is one of the main things that causes us to doubt God's love. But like a light in the midst of darkness, God's love provides hope in the midst of our suffering and doubt. We go to Romans 5, 3 and 8, where it says, We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character, and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us, because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed us his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. This passage takes me back to high school, and okay, that's a long time ago. But I remember this, our weather has been kind of warm recently, and it's reminded me of the beginning of track season. When you get out there and you're up and, and you're puffing, and you're, but the more you do it, you build that endurance, and pretty soon that huffing and puffing goes away, and you develop strength through it. And when we go to God, it develops our strength of character. And we understand the confident hope of salvation. And our hope is not in ourselves. God didn't wait for us to get our act together before he sent Christ. He knew we were already hopeless. <laughs> and that may sound a little harsh, but in reality, we were born into a sinless, or a sinful world. Not a sinless one, but a sinful world. So it's not really harsh at all. And when you came, some of you have grown up in the church, other of you have had the epiphany moment. God met you right where you were at, regardless of where you were at. And so while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Ephesians 2, 4 and 5 tell, reminds us of this very same thing when it says, But God is so rich in mercy and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. So our hope is not in something that might or might not happen. It's already been given. It's a hope that will never disappoint. It will never put us to shame. God's love provides hope that is rooted in his amazing grace. And that hope will one day be proven more powerful, more longer lasting, more true and triumphant than any of our present problems and pains. Because God's love provides purpose. How often have you questioned your purpose in life? How often have you come to the end of a job and you went, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what my purpose is. I don't know what I'm going to do. God's love provides us purpose. And how often do we pray for God to show us what he wants us to do? I know we've been, as, as our time here in this space has started to come to a close, we've been praying, God, where do you want us to go? And we found all these places on our own. Okay, Mark found all these places. But we found all these places and we were like, oh, this is perfect. This is on the side of town we want to be on. And he, oh, God said, nope, we're going to move you about. 15 minutes that way. The other side of town. We're still going to be on the south side of town, just different town. South side of Marion. But God has a purpose for us. 1 John 3.16 gives us that instruction. It says, we know what real love is because Jesus gave up his life for us. So we also ought to give up our lives for our brothers and sisters. I'm not necessarily talking about dying for our brothers and sisters, but going out on a limb. And when you're talking to someone who's hurting, that you share with them. We live in a hurting world. And as much as we want, as much as we pray for, we can't change that. 
And as much as we'd like to, we don't get to decide when God heals someone and when God doesn't. But we can always share his love in every circumstance. Now, of course, you all probably know 1 Corinthians 13 as the love chapter. It spells out for us what it should look like and how to show love. And in verses 4 and 8 it says this, love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable and it keeps no records of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. Prophecy and speaking in unknown languages and special knowledge will become useless, but love will last forever. And the specifics of showing love can look very different for each of us as well because of the circumstances that we find ourselves in. God's love can be shared listening to a friend. I ran into a, an old an employee from my McLeod days yesterday at Walmart. And we sat and talked. I think Diane got like 20 minutes worth of shopping done while we stood there and talked. But I got to listen to him and got to hear about his life and where he was at. And it's also caring for a parent. How, how many of you care for your parents now? It's also doing business with integrity or telling the truth it might even be cooking a meal or giving of our time and talents. It could be celebrating a victory or weeping or grieving with someone over a loss. Every situation we find ourselves in is an opportunity to show and live God's love. And when we love others, it binds our hearts together and draws us closer to the heart of God. In John 13, 34 and 35, Jesus gave his ex disciples a new principle to live by when he said, So now I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other, just as I have loved you. You should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. So we could say, love is God's trademark. It's who he is. And as his followers, sharing God's love with others gives us purpose in everything we do. Because it goes right back to what we started with. God loves you. And that love is miraculous. It defies explanation by any means. It transcends the limitations of our world and of our minds. It calls us and carries us to much more in being in Christ. And my prayer today is that you will know his love beyond any shadow of a doubt. And if you are sensing God's love for the very first time today, embrace it, accept it. Let his love change your life for eternity. And if you are being reminded of his love, let it wash. Have you ever had that feeling where it just, something just washes over you? Let that wash over you. Let his love wash over you. And cover every part of your life. Let his love provide you with comfort, with hope, and purpose. And I pray for each of you, as the Apostle Paul prayed for the Ephesians, that as we trust Jesus, he will make his home in our hearts. And this prayer comes from Ephesians 3, 17 and 19. And this is the prayer that I leave us with right now. That your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And you may have the power to understand as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep His love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Pastor Perry, as we come into this time of communion, I'd like you to 
is take a moment in silence to reflect on God and his love in your life. How God shows out his love in your life. And how you can show out God's love for others in your life. See, as we come into the time of communion today, we think about what it represents. We think about the body of Christ being offered up to us in the form of bread, something that we can relate to, <coughs> something that will consume and, and live within us. We think about the body of Christ being broken, taking on the sins of the world, being broken down, beaten, taken a beating, and just taking the punishment for the sins of the world. That is the body of Christ. And then we talk about the blood of Christ that was shed for us. See, this blood washes us clean of all those sins. So as we take our communion today, we think about Christ being nailed to the cross. How, how great is his love? His arms are stretched wide open. Embracing all of us for all eternity in his love. How great is that love? It's stretched out on the cross. He died to save us from those sins. On the night that he was taken and betrayed, he met with the disciples and he explained this very thing to them. He talked about the meaning of his body being broken down, the flesh being broken down, taking on the sins. And he broke bread and he said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken. And later in the meal, he took a cup and he filled it and he blessed it. And he said, This is the cup of the new covenant. My blood shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins, washing us clean our sinful nature. And each time that we take of this bread and drink of this cup, we are to do it until Christ comes again to bring us into glory in eternity. Take that moment in silence to reflect on how great God's love is for us. How great and how good stewards we can be of his love for others and towards others. The body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Thanks be to God. Amen. As we come into our time now of prayers for the people, we've got uh, quite a few people who are sick, ill, out today, or not able to be with us. Hopefully they can join us online. Um, you know, when we think about this, and as uh, Pastor Bruce was talking about how infectious things can be, and we, we think of infectious and, and the spread of viruses and disease and everything else, but Really, truly, COVID doesn't have to be the only thing that's infectious out here, okay? We need to be infectious for others and show God's love for others and give it openly and freely. Let's spread that virus around, shall we? Amen. And hopefully it infects the entire world with love, with hope, with peace, with grace, and with mercy. So as we... Uh, uh, met on Wednesday, we had quite a number of new uh, people that we've been praying for and, and some of the people that we had prayed for, we've, we've had answered prayers. And it's awesome. It's just, you know, really fulfilling, uplifting. It's something for us to celebrate and praise God for that the fact that prayers are being answered. People are being lifted up. And we start by hitting our knees. And then we can be lifted up. Amen. 
Thank God for that. Do we have any prayers or praises that you'd like to bring forth today? Praying for strong marriages. Praying for strong marriages. That's an excellent prayer. Okay. Anything else we can lift up today? We can lift up that God will be felt in a new location for us. Yes. And that he will move us in mighty ways Amen. to do his work and his will in our lives. Because that's what it's all about. Well, let's go to God in prayer, shall we? Thank you, precious God, that you have given us the messages of your word and song today. Thank you, Lord, that you have shown us a way to live out your love for others. Help us to be good stewards of the love that you give to us. Help us to be good stewards of the life that you give to us. We were created to be your servants, Lord. We were created to be your hands and feet and to walk in grace with you. Thank you, Lord, that you carry us through those hard times in our lives, that you walk beside us, holding our hands. Thank you, Lord God, that you are grace and mercy and unending love for us, freely and wholly given, and agape love with no strings attached. Your God, your love is eternal. You know, in, in the, uh, the movie that, that these last four sermon series have been about, uh, we find that it's really, it gives you this great feeling to be cheering for this little girl. And we see a miracle, God working a miracle in this little girl. We like to cheer for the underdog. We like to cheer for... It gives us a good feeling. Today you might have a football team playing, and you might be cheering for somebody. You might be cheering for Patrick Mahomes. Who knows who you're cheering for? But anyway, it gives us a good feeling to cheer for something. But, you know, it's, there's no coincidence that the series was ended with love. Because... Uh, during this movie, uh, when they were talking about how the movie was made, there's a scene in the movie where uh, they're having this awesome church service. The place is packed, and third day's up there playing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, break. Anyway, <laughs> and they say, well, you know, we brought third day in to do this movie with us for a reason. And so I read a little bit more about that because that intrigued me. Uh, the song we're going to do right now is by Third Day. And let's listen to what they have to say about miracles. Miracles with signs and wonders aren't enough for me to prove to you. Don't you know I've always loved you? Even before there was time, though you turn away, I tell you still, don't you know I've always loved you? And I always will. So even though that miracle of that little girl being healed, we see that, but it's kind of short-lived in us. Um, we look for the next miracle. Mm -hmm. How many miracles have we seen in the Old Testament and in the New Testament? It's never enough. It's never enough. But what is enough? Exactly what Terry told us today. God's love. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
Father, I thank and praise you for being here today in our midst. I thank you that we have this opportunity to come together, whether it be in this space, in a new space, in the street, in our homes, wherever we are. We can always worship you, Lord.
miracle worker, the light in the darkness. Heavenly Father, these are more than words. These are our hearts that we give to you because you are so worthy. We are such a sinful people, but you sent your son to die on that cross like Mark was talking about. And, and Lord, we just, we just want to give back a small portion in praise and worship to you today. All right. We're going to praise and worship Jesus in a fun way now, which is what we like to do. And this comes from a, a, a version of the Bible that I grew up with. Um, some of you may have read this, but it's the Revised Standard Version. This is uh, the blessing that God gave to Moses for Aaron and his sons to bless the people of Israel. But it goes a step further. It's to bless all of us. 
So may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And I charge you today that Jesus is the rock. And to take that love that he gives us, go out that door and show it to everyone Amen. that you come in contact with and meet. Thank mm -hmm. you.